some of this, some of that podcast episode 107. Ooh, seven. That's a good one. 107. 107. 107. I don't even have a I don't even have a shout out for 107. I don't have a shout out even 107. That's my lucky number. That's, that's my lucky number. my universal number. So that's good. Okay. That's okay. Cool. Not 107, that. but seven. Yeah, well, seven. Well, that's my birthday is July, so. Like we can do that. We can we can roll with that. Happy birthdays in July. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm Coach Sorry Mo. Sorry, lady, Mark. I'm, I'm Coach Mo. We got we got T's over there. We back again. Sonic College Studio. Yeah. Uh, Sonic College Studio. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's what I thought. It's been, 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 yeah, been some weeks. Yeah, we've been missing in action. Been some weeks. <laughs> but we, we back here. Yeah. And as you lovely people can see on the video, and the camera, we have a guest. We have a... Like we said we would. I'm back. She actually had two time guests. She just looked different. I'm back. Yeah, she, she did, you know, a little switch up, change up. <laughs> she was this out, this, this, just before you officially introduce it if if y'all are true listeners and y'all remember jaleesa mm-hmm. when we very first started and we was like using zoom yeah, <laughs> yeah. so she might have been on like episode maybe like five or something yeah she <laughs> probably, was she was real probably. early on so yeah. our real supporters will know who she is so well you dang you just introduced her. i did my bad i took but, the job but you did, <laughs> you did a great job but as, as Latisse said, this is like our, one of our very, very first guests. So she's back. You know, it took like three years, but she's back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now she's got some great things to tell you people, lovely people. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is Miss Jaleesa. Miss Jaleesa Pertamores. Yes. Hand clap. Hand clap. Yes. <laughs> What's up, Jaleesa? I'm here. She's here looking uh, pretty here. <laughs> giving y'all the 90s. Yes, I'm, I'm loving bringing it. Bringing it all the way back. I love it. I'm thinking about doing the same thing, but I'm kind of chicken, but she I got love the, it. She got the Holly Berry. She got the Holly Berry. Yes. I, did. I love it. Yeah. I love I did. it. I had to listen to Tony Braxton and then I got my hair cut <laughs> just to really make it right. Make yeah. It right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you had to get in full, like, uh, full mode. To, yes. To I, I love did. it. I love it. Yeah. I so, did. yeah. So, we're going to just, for those of you, I think we kind of mentioned it last week. Um, since this May is Mental Health Awareness yes, um, Month, we wanted to bring Jaleesa back to kind of discuss where we are with mental you know, health um, within our community. Um, just talk about the state of mental health and just like a lot of stuff that's been going on within um, this yeah. last week um, yeah. that we've seen, you know, regarding... Um, you know, mental health and where it stands in our community. So that's going to be the basis of our show. We're going to try to close this month out um, just with a little bit of positivity, you know, around that so that we can uh, just make sure that we all in good mental health. Um, mm-hmm. And so um, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll turn it. Moses is just usually our, our curator. <laughs> uh, so, but I guess I can do it today. <laughs> I guess I can do it today, but um, but anyway, Jaleesa, so since we last yeah. spoke, um, uh, I say, how you been? Well, what's what's how's everything been going with the professional wise? Uh, professionally, yeah. pretty good, still doing my thing with the business. Mm-hmm. So, for the people that don't know, I'm a clinical therapist, LCPC. Okay. Uh, so I, I'm you know, I got the letters behind my name. Yeah, I can talk about it. Official. I can talk about it. <laughs> the official. Um, yeah, but I'm doing a lot in the practice. I'm working with uh, clinical fellows now. So okay. I'm like, supervising clinicians. Mm. And uh, that's been really fun. Mm-hmm. That's really good. Yeah. It's only one of me. And now I can create more of me. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's nice. That's, yeah, I've been advocating for... Black women, black clinicians, mm-hmm. and clinicians of color. Uh, so you know, for that to be heard mm-hmm. is is priceless. Mm-hmm. So you know, it's not my. I'm, I work with um, another person in their practice, a balanced awakening in Chicago. But it's really nice to have a place where women can get the support they need. Mm-hmm. And so I've been really focusing on work. Y'all haven't seen me because I have a three year old. Yeah. So I think he was like some months when yeah, I first yes, came. Yeah. And yeah. I was probably looking like what I was going through <laughs> as we're New talking about. Yeah. yeah. As we as we're supposed to be talking about mental health, yeah. I was 
going through it. Yeah. I got so, questions yeah. too. So about yeah. that part. Maternal mental health. That and postpartum. So, postpartum. Yeah, so awesome. I'm glad you brought that up. So yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. We could talk about that. So yeah. we can get right into it. So he's bigger. He's yeah. like, bye-bye, mommy. Bye. I'm gone. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm out here doing my thing. So Jaleesa, <laughs> now since you said you have questions about that, and even yeah. you as a clinician, like, mm -hmm. you know, um, some people, I think a lot of men, I don't should say men, but I think people in general don't realize the magnitude of delivering a baby. The I mean, you have no, nine. The, yeah. But you we don't know. I mean, don't. and I think, yeah. so I think, because I think about like, um, more and more you see like these young mothers, like killing themselves, mm -hmm. killing their kids. And mm -hmm. I don't think people related to postpartum, like yeah. depression. Like I just saw... This was maybe a couple months ago. Y'all probably saw it too. It was a girl. She had two kids, I believe. One was like maybe like six months and she had like a five-year-old. And she killed their dad, I believe. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then she killed the kids mm -hmm. and then she killed herself. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and mm. so she was, I don't think she was 30. But then she was saying stuff about, um, gosh, what was she saying that she was saying the world was going to end. Like she kind of lost her mind. Kind of, she oh. was talking about the world ended and she was, she was ending their misery. See, this is what oh. you stole my question. Yeah. I was going to wow. bring that. You remember? Oh, okay. 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 Syn so, Synchronicity around yeah, because here. What I was basically, what I was going to ask you was that one, who failed her? Mm. And two, what are the signs that not only if, if a woman isn't married, should his husband be, should her husband be looking for or her friends or family should be looking for okay so uh is that who failed her mm -hmm. that that's tough mm -hmm. um because there are so many systems at play that fail us as a people mm -hmm. she's a black young she she's black, yeah mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we have yeah. systems that can fail us. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, I think for us in the community, it's maybe like b being believed. Mm -hmm. And um, even just to tie in birth, pain, pain is not seen as registered the same way for Black women. Mm -hmm. So imagine she's saying things that might spark a red flag. Mm -hmm but maybe no one's right. questioning or right. believing or taking the time. Mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with the story, so I'm not sure mm -hmm. what the dynamics are, but if generally, um, if there's a lack of support, mm -hmm. if we are not believing people mm -hmm. <laughs> when they are showing us what they're going through, sometimes we go, oh, that's just my crazy cousin, Keisha. Right. Right. No. Yeah. He should need some help. He should need some help. He should need some help. Yeah. Um, and then, but then also, you know, I'm an advocate for we all got to be accountable for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she was looking for help, mm -hmm. but that's the start. Mm -hmm. Keep looking until somebody believes you. Mm -hmm. Till you know you get the work, the, the work that you need, the mm -hmm. support that you need. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's all systems. It's mm -hmm. everything. And uh, in her postpartum, she might have been okay and maybe slipped into some paranoia. Mm -hmm. I don't know what her postpartum experience was. Cause you said she had a six year old. I think she, she had like a, like a, I think a child that was like less than one. Okay. And then she had like a couple that were like were toddler like, ages. Toddler, I think yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. think they were like too old. Yeah. So it, it seemed like, you know, she could, she could have been dealing with like a high level, mm -hmm. you know, type of, mm -hmm. you know, postpartum depression. Postpartum on top of trauma, on top of whatever that relationship could have been. Mm -hmm. But we don't know the mental state of her partner. That's true. Because um, the person that can recognize that, I don't know if they're with someone who's right. declining or or maybe he did everything he could do and mm -hmm. she's, she's still declined and there was right. you know, not a whole lot that can happen. Mm -hmm. But I would say all systems, you know, I think everyone um, can take some ownership, but we also don't want to place blame, like mm -hmm. what someone could have done more, right? The doctor, they do the screenings. Okay. Um, no matter what form of care you're getting, you, you're going to get the screening um, when you go to your postpartum exam um, visits. Mm -hmm. You, know, you got to take the baby to the visit. You got to take yourself to the visit. Mm -hmm. So... 
if she's feeling that, but if she has some paranoia or something, she might not even be revealing that to anybody. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if, if only her partner and her kids see that side of her, then we, we have no clue who saw what. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sadly, it's just as, as a community, as a whole at large, uh, we just, there's so much stigma around mental health still mm -hmm. it's shifting. Mm -hmm. Now more people are being honest about what they're going through, mm -hmm. but sometimes you can be honest and open and then people around you still don't know how to help. Yeah. True. So I think that speaks to your second question. True. Which was how how we can help? What could have, supports could yeah, have been in like place? What or what signs if the someone's in the home, whatever the spouse, mm -hmm. close friends, like like if is there yeah. anything to look for? Yeah, yeah. So I would say specifically when it's postpartum, um, you know, we're looking at the mother maybe not connecting with the child. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not finding any interests, not getting out, not even not being able to care for herself, the home, mm -hmm. the children, mm -hmm. um, tearfulness, you know, all those typical signs of depression. Now, when we go into deeper things like paranoia or mania, mm -hmm. those are kind of obvious, mm -hmm. right? right? These people feel like, yeah. okay, something's out to get them or they're hyper-focusing or hyper-fixating on something. Right that might be the place where you say, hey, I wonder if that could be a support. But again, if someone's paranoid or manic, you could cause more harm than good mm -hmm. by pushing them to try true, to true. you know, get the support you can. The best someone else could have done was maybe try to intervene by doing a, sending out like a wellness check or mm -hmm. intervening while the children are there. But then, you know, Honestly, as a black person, I, I struggle to say that mm -hmm. because we don't want people <laughs> to get their kids taken away yeah, from them, true. right? Yeah. <laughs> but some people might need mm -hmm. that, but we don't want people in our yeah. house either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's, that's the that's, that's the true. thing that's going to be a thread um, as we talk about mental health, especially in the black community, is what do we do? You know, having boundaries and keeping things so private and mm -hmm. tucked that they go unhealed so long. generationally. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the issue. Maybe that's to blame. Mm -hmm. There's a generational thread of, mm -hmm. um, just a lack of awareness and a, a lack of destigmatization, mm -hmm. um, and a, just a lack of capacity to be authentic in wherever your mental state is. Yeah. Cause I okay. think too, like, um, I think the last time we was here, we did have one of the last time we were here, we had a a, um, a guest, and he's a he's an ex basketball player, and he's advocating for mental health for like athletes mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the process of life after basketball. What we do, you know, yeah, and his transition of what he um, had to go through, and just in general, like you said, I think it's the it's the it's the stigma, and it's the it's the belief thing with black people too, mm -hmm. you know, because when like you say if people we blow off a lot of stuff and we just charge it to you know he all right like she gonna be all right it's just yeah. like it's people true. have real trauma like yeah. people have real issues and i don't think that because of the systems that we have in place <laughs> yeah. we condition ourselves to think like it's it's like we got to be tough mm -hmm. all yeah. the time we can never yeah. like lay it down and yeah. it's detrimental to us and it's just i i guess it was good to have you on now because even with all the resources that we have with mental health and mental health awareness yeah. and mental wellness, I feel like people are, it seems, I don't say it's worse. Maybe we just see it more, but it still is like, it's still bad. I mean, it's still, it's <laughs> yeah. still a lot of people like, you know, um, just not not tapping in. Mm -hmm. It's not, they're just not tapping in. And so, you know, I don't, it's the, uh, it's, conversation like this but it's just like you know i feel like in america and i think we talked about this before probably i think in america black people in general need therapy yeah <laughs> it, it really? won't kill us it you won't. know because of just the trauma of 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 that it's 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 what do you call i don't know if it's you can give me the medical term but just the things that we see it might not even be directly related it's to vicarious you. trauma yeah uh -huh. but it's just like because we see it all the time it's yeah. just like it kind of plays in your mind you know right and and then we are uh kind of like you say conditioned to, to almost ignore that 
now it's it's just a part of who we are. Mm -hmm. I tell a lot of my clients, like, you know, I don't like that strong black woman trope. I don't either. Yeah. Because that doesn't give us any room. Yeah. Even for a black man to shed a tear, you know, things like that. It's like we that's not that is actual, I call it fragile strength. Mm -hmm. But that is blown glass. It can shatter. Mm -hmm. You you kind of want to be flexible mm -hmm. here. We want to do some things and have some awareness about what we can do. But people are not tapping in, like you said, for mm -hmm. whatever reason, whatever is stopping us. Mm -hmm. um, it is harder for some people to really access mm -hmm. and take accountability. Yeah. So you're gonna hear me say that a lot too. Mm -hmm. You have because there are so many resources now. Either want it or you don't. Either you want it or you don't. <laughs> yeah, either want it like, or you don't. Uh, what's the best way to say that? <laughs> yeah. You know? You either so, want it or you don't. And yeah. I, I think some people get addicted to to the trauma too. Like they just don't. They, yes, people are addicted to stress. Yeah. It's literally a feedback loop. And it's not even, and sometimes it's not conscious, mm -hmm. right? Like some people are not actively seeking it out. Mm -hmm. Their body is now at a state where they need to be at 10 to, yeah. to function. Yeah. It's just like mm -hmm. a drug addiction. Wow. Mm -hmm. So stress and trauma, anxiety, depression, all these things, we, we're there. Mm -hmm. And the state of the world is, is all, if you constantly are watching the news, mm -hmm. you cannot tell me Strolling. that you don't need, yes. <laughs> you don't need to out, out, an outlet for that. Yeah. And then not everybody needs, maybe, maybe not everyone needs to talk to someone in a therapeutic setting, mm -hmm. but I don't think we as a people take care of ourselves, period. Mm -hmm. Not everybody exercises, not mm -hmm. everybody goes on vacations, mm -hmm. not everyone has someone that they want to talk to. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of, parents outletting on their children uh i'm holding the same stuff you holding because yeah. i came from you so i don't know yeah. yeah if i'm the best person yeah. to lay that burden on yeah. Yeah. um or friends or like oh i don't want to burden my friend with that i don't mm -hmm. want to burden anyone in my circle with that because we all got something going on mm -hmm. yeah but you got to find somebody to talk to yeah. or something mm -hmm. that you need an outlet you need an outlet mm -hmm. you need something mm -hmm. to support you and a lot of people don't go internal mm -hmm. Because that's where all the dark stuff is. You don't want to deal with it. And they don't want to deal with yeah. it. The only way to deal with it, you got to go through it. You got to. You got to go through it to access yourself, to access the parts of yourself mm -hmm. that can get you through. Mm -hmm. You got to meet that. So would you say that's like when we talk about mental wellness, is that is that like basically kind of what mental wellness is? Is, is, is that tapping in, you mm -hmm. know, and dealing with that, that, that ugly stuff? There is no amount of external resource that can supersede what you find with inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you can do all these ex external things and they're wonderful supports. But if it's landing on deaf ears, so to speak, deaf ears, then what? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you go exercise, but that don't, you're not working on your mental, yeah. your thoughts, mm -hmm. how you think, what you consume, mm -hmm. um, whether it's food, whether it's media, mm -hmm. uh, it, publications, because mm -hmm. not everything we read is good either. Yeah. So if you're mm -hmm. not paying attention and holding awareness for your internal space, mm -hmm. you're creating a safe space within you. Mm -hmm. And for some people, that's really hard. Um, to tap into that. But I think once you can access that, you're better able to receive the external. Yeah. And then then there's no one to blame. There's mm -hmm. no shame, blame, or guilt in that. You can say, okay, I had a hard day, mm -hmm. but I tap into me and I kind of, I know that I can get through this hard day versus that pissed me off, that did it, that mm -hmm. did it, that did it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just sitting here. Now yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. Being in, then which, when we, when we stay, doing nothing then we're no good you know yeah. like we're not being we're not being what we were called to do and so that's why you know the the importance of like you said tapping in and dealing with that that nasty stuff we have to i mean it's it's the hard part but like you said we'll never get to the good part unless yeah. we deal with the bottom and i um i see um like i just said a couple a few weeks ago, we took a break. Wasn't it was because I needed a mental break, and yeah. Yeah. I um yeah. 
I'm learning that sometimes I can't do stuff. Yeah. You know, like if we do the podcast, but I got stuff I got to do for work. I got stuff I do for church. I got a lot of stuff that I have mm-hmm. to do. And sometimes my mind is always going. Mm-hmm. And then it really is. It's like I'm always thinking. And then I get exhausted mentally. And mm-hmm. then I get exhausted physically. And it's just like, I can't even focus. So mm-hmm. I can't even do the podcast because I can't even really focus on the topics, you know, because yeah. I can't, I won't give my best. And I don't like just getting up here talking if I know I'm not on, you know, so right. I'm like, I need a, I'm learning now. Like it took me a long time, but I'm on it now. Like sometimes I just have to be like, I can't. Mm-hmm. Like I just I can't for my own mental health I can't. Yeah, I don't you have know? the capacity. I don't mm-hmm. have the capacity. You take the okay. Anita Baker approach. <laughs> yeah, just just don't hey, show I, up. I, I can't. <laughs> Wait, I'm I, not gonna do it. I'm not Baker. showing up. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> just don't show up. Just don't show up. It's fine. If I say you can that that ain't coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I yeah. need y'all some water. If 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 you know if it's uh <laughs> if I'm not coming, but um. <laughs> But, so go ahead, Mo. So I know you, you you touched on it, but let's talk about let's talk about social media mm-hmm. because um I feel like social media is a gift and a curse. Mm-hmm. Um I feel like it's good for it's good for a lot of things that social media brings us aware of, whether it's news, sports, yeah. whatever you're into. But I also think for a certain age group. It's detrimental mm. Uh, mm. because now on social media, I have this thing where I say with social media, there's really no more shame anymore. Mm. Everybody puts everything on social media. Yeah. People will put on social media that they're naked walking down the street. They'll put on social media that they've been evicted. They'll put on social yeah. media that they don't want their kids anymore. Like there's no shame anymore with social media. Mm-hmm. And I think for the younger delegation, I really think social media puts a lot of pressure on them mentally mm-hmm. to either keep up mm-hmm. or to make sure that they are a part of society in a good way. Yeah. And I feel like for young people who aren't accepted by social media or their peers, they have a hard time mentally dealing with that. So do you think that I know for me, I take social media breaks. Mm-hmm. I think in schools, they really need to maybe like have classes or type of sessions with these young kids and tell them, find a way to separate yourself from mm-hmm. that phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you think that social media is really good for like the younger generation, meaning like the 21 and under? Mm. Like you said, it, there it's a blessing and it's a curse. Mm-hmm. Their, their generation is experiencing overexposure Mm -hmm. and you know it started in our generation Mm -hmm. right i think i was telling somebody just the other day i'm like you know we had the dial up like at some like you really gotta want to get on it (laughs) right you really gotta be trying to talk to somebody (laughs) to sit there and wait for that thing to dial up (laughs) and there wasn't as much information to access yeah And so right now what they don't know how to do because their brains are not there Mm -hmm. is to um, monitor their impulse. Mm -hmm. So, Uh, so impulse is not going to allow that age group to just stop. Mm -hmm. That's some significant manual labor that the uh, adults in their world would have to Mm kind of monitor for them. Mm -hmm. And it's still a challenge because they, they, some of them don't understand. They don't know why, Mm -hmm. because they're just operating on their, their, primitive system their Mm -hmm. brain has been fed just like stress Mm -hmm. now we have a feedback loop of Mm -hmm. meet this need meet it meet Mm -hmm. it meet it the social media the act of scrolling you know i feel like i'm kanye right now but the act of scrolling it literally is meant to rewire the 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 brain Mm -hmm. and and so so you have that biologically their impulses are overexposed they've been Mm -hmm. And then they've been overexposed to certain things that maybe they never would have. And that's that can be a good thing. That can be a bad thing. Sometimes kids are seeing things like right now, that age group is really into the political world. Yes. Which is weird. So I have some clients who are <laughs> really into that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, wow, I didn't give a damn when I was over at <laughs> age. I didn't know right. nothing about a thing. Yeah. Right. And and so, but even that is detrimental. Like it is the political state of the world is 
negatively impacting their mental health because it's like, what can I do? Mm -hmm. Social media and just media in general for that age group, you can feel really small mm -hmm. or you can feel like you're a part of something. something. Mm -hmm. and, and that's it's such a fine line to to temper is 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 as delicate as tempering chocolate mm -hmm. you cannot allow that to go unmonitored mm -hmm. and that's really <laughs> that's the key is mm -hmm. and then when the, but even as much as you want to monitor you may miss some things like you yeah. said people are using it as diaries they're mm -hmm. if it's not their stuff they're recording homelessness mm -hmm. they're recording mm -hmm. drug the you know people going through yeah. they going through their stuff on, while they're on drugs and mm -hmm. and so like I said I think it's just an overexposure mm -hmm. to all things on the media mm -hmm. even uh, you know the news but that's something you could click off but when they have something so accessible it's on their phones mm -hmm. it's in the video it's games video game. yeah you know so as much as you want to keep it away from them I think the the effort is not to keep it from them, but like I said, to monitor yeah. and then have corrective action when they're exposed to something mm -hmm. that doesn't align to your values in your home. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, not all kids have that. So um, hopefully we could educate them on, I think it is healthy social media use. It's mm -hmm. just like sex. You're not going to stop a 16 year old from having sex if right. that's what they want to do. Right. But there are some things that we could Put in place. Put in place. Yeah. And I think that that is like how to be a good social media consumer. Mm -hmm. So going back to the word consumption, what are mm -hmm. you consuming? Mm -hmm. How is it making you feel? Tying mm -hmm. back into your body. Mm -hmm. Think about that. How do you feel when you get yeah. off of... Oh God, TikTok, Instagram. I was gonna say Facebook. They're yeah. not on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> they on TikTok. They on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. They on TikTok. yeah. You know, yeah. if you have that level of connection with your child maybe yeah. or you know with your young person in your life maybe you can do that mm -hmm. um but yes we would want to monitor the honest truth is monitor what you could you could put all that you want on and they're they're likely going to be exposed to something mm -hmm. so if we're all just kind of aware of that and having corrective actions as adults being comfortable being like hey you know, I'm not comfortable with you seeing that. Or how do you feel about that? That now that you've just seen that, mm -hmm. and how do you feel about us creating some boundaries around that? Mm -hmm. So we, as the adults, have to be able to have those conversations with them because, like I said, in their brains, it they're not gonna stop on it. <laughs> they yeah. don't want to. Yeah, it's, so. there's they nothing that's stop. telling no. me as a grown person, yeah. as a therapist. Yeah. I know getting on TikTok is not good for me yeah. right before bed. <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> it gets the better of me. Because, <laughs> because you you go on there and next thing go down you a know, rabbit hole. You yeah. like I didn't been in here on here for twenty five minutes. Yes, yeah. Let I'm looking at scroll. somebody's story yeah. and then they didn't put yeah. three million parts to it, and I have yeah. to know what's happening. And so I think it's just human nature. Yep. So that's the other thing too, kind of recognizing, destigmatizing the age group, mm -hmm. and recognizing our own, even as adults. Yes, mm -hmm. even in in us, we do it too. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a reprimand; it's just corrective action. Mm -hmm. Families can come together and have not just I'm a this y'all stop taking y'all kids phones <laughs> as punishment mm, okay stop okay. doing that see we got this is good now ex explain why <laughs> because this does know. not work okay mm. it doesn't work some of your kids that is the their only lifeline because you are not the lifeline mm. and that's that can cause more harm than good Mm -hmm. All they're learning to do is hold it all in. Mm -hmm. And then they get the phone back. And what do you think they're going to do? Mm -hmm. Be exposed to the same things. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a it's um I don't think it's an, a, uh, an effective uh, course of action. Mm -hmm. I think m having conversation, mm -hmm. understanding why mm -hmm. this is, you know, coming, bringing them into their reprimand into what do you what, what do you think? we should do about this behavior mm -hmm. bringing them into that and have a having them join the conversation so maybe if you do want to take the phone they're like okay i get it mm -hmm. i need a break take my phone because i need a break right you break. know not right. my mama took my phone so now i gotta wait yeah. can't call y'all i'm you in consume, my room can't I'm wait till you get it back literally yeah. have heard this before i'm in my room ready to slip my wrist because mm -hmm. i don't have my phone wow. crazy wow. okay would you rather your child be here or have their phone right wow right 
because they can't separate it. Like the right. kids cannot separate. I can't even say the kids, adults too. Like when you are in social media, I think people lose sight of reality. Yes. At some point, you know, and I think like you said, it really does. You have to teach if kids are going to be on social media, they do need to be taught how to use social media uh -huh. because there's no way that an eight year old and 10 year olds should be going to school because they were bullied online right. and want to kill themselves right. because people are bullying them online. 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 And it's not like, I'm like, it could be an adult doing that. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? They don't even know. So, and then even then, like, that's the thing to teach your child. Like if you're in, if you're on a page and you're interacting with somebody and they're giving you energy, get off it. You know, yeah. you have to teach them. Like you said, like you yeah. have, it, it really is that I don't think, we've kids are exposed to stuff with with no with no um no blueprint yeah so no they just like no it's information overload and uh -huh. they just they and are they trying take it to as process. fact yes they, they take this it as fact is, yes yeah. like this is this is reality social media is everybody's thoughts mm -hmm. social media is the foolishness of everybody's brain <laughs> yes happening all at the same time mm -hmm. and if you focus in on your own thought process sometimes you have to say that's just a thought. That's mm -hmm. not actually a it's fact. It's not actually a fact. Yeah. So <laughs> apply that to social media. These yeah. are a bunch of people's thoughts. Mm -hmm. This is not fact. Mm -hmm. This has nothing to do with your true it's reality. Not, it's not fact for me. Yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is not a fact. Right. You know, yeah. <laughs> this right. is, mm, yeah. we got to question some things yeah. here. And, it, and yeah. so, you know, building into, and honestly, building into them is, is going to be the best way too. If we can build confidence, um, and I think for us now that we're, you know, coming of age as parents or even older parents may not know how to do that, or some younger parents may not know how to do that, mm -hmm. um, how to speak life into your kids so that when they are exposed, mm -hmm. when they experience something, yeah. when they're, they've seen something that they can take that pause. Mm -hmm. It may, I've it hurts me, yeah. I've had to but how to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, this is hurtful. Mm -hmm. This person said this. Mm -hmm. But is that who you are? Right. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. does that change who you are today? I had to say that to my daughter the other day mm -hmm. about something, and she's nine going on 10. Mm -hmm. And I'm granted, it happened in school, but there have been some offline things mm -hmm. happening. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, before people don't know that her mama is a therapist, I'm uh -oh. like, okay, well, let's, let's, let's pause here. Uh -huh. Her dad is really good about that. Mm -hmm. Like, that has, that, that's energy. Mm -hmm. That's that's someone else's energy that they're mm -hmm. trying to put on you. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with you. Yeah. So bullying and cyberbullying, these people are at home. I've experienced um, and been able to witness that of the bully. So their home life, mm -hmm. what that looks like, mm -hmm. what they're going through, and um, how they're then putting that on to mm -hmm. other kids. Yeah. Other kids. Now we can hold grace for them, but also check your kids check your kids but also yeah. you probably are in a home with someone yeah. who's not going to be able to do that <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but we just have to know you know i told my daughter like you know what we don't know what this kid is going through mm -hmm. and whatever it is they're showing it to you mm -hmm. that's not about you mm -hmm. that's not yours to hold don't you mm -hmm. pick it up you just yes, let it yes. be what it is, it is. Mm -hmm. keep it moving that's not you mm -hmm. and you know it's not you yeah. and you know you're loved don't matter now as a as a as a parent and a therapist do sometimes you have to take your therapist hat off and just be the parent or do <laughs> yeah. you or you just find a balance and just or, or you both. know what is so funny <laughs> because it's, it's, you would think that mm -hmm. you would really think that i'm always therapizing my child mm -hmm. boy when i tell i'm going through it <laughs> mm -hmm. as a Therapist is harder because I know when I'm triggered mm -hmm. and I don't always know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. So this is me being honest, mm -hmm. right? That I don't always show up. Like my, my kid is not mentally perfect because her mother's a therapist. Right. Right. Like, whew, yeah. she's going to need some maintenance when she get old. Yeah. It's somebody else. Cause yeah. I'm human too. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, my struggle is I know what to do, mm -hmm. but then what part of me shows up? And what part of me is triggered by my child or her, gotcha. their behaviors? It wasn't the, my adult self. Because yeah. if it wasn't, I'm going to have to go back mm -hmm. and do some corrective action. Mm -hmm. Take some corrective actions. Apologize. You know what I'm sorry? Or really be honest. Like, I'm feeling frustrated. It's not you. Mm -hmm. I might be raising my voice at you. I might seem frustrated. But it's actually, it's not you. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so more so than anything, I have to dial myself back mm -hmm. and I have to put my therapist hat on for me, mm. not necessarily for her because the kids only need love. Yeah. Um, and so the therapist in me has to remind myself, you are loved. You can love them. Mm -hmm. That's when the hat comes on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's what's up. Um, I yeah, got, I, I, uh, I got I got other questions, but I mean, go ahead. <laughs> this is good. For no, me. what what was the question? So I want to get into because I know my fellas are probably waiting on me to ask this question. Uh oh. Uh -huh. So what about men? Let's talk about yeah. men. Okay. So I know, and and growing up in the in the black community, in our delegation, met, mental health, going to see a therapist, psychiatrist. Growing up back in the day, it was considered a sign of weakness. Mm. You know, just we're just gonna be honest. If you have problems, either your uncle or your grandfather told you, boy, just get over it, deal with it. You a yeah. man. We ain't supposed to cry. We supposed to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I can be honest about I have my son, he's 18 now. He's he's about to graduate tomorrow from high school. When he was, thank you. When he was little baby he would fall my wife his mom oh baby get it and i should be like no nah, leave him alone <laughs> yeah and i should yell at him like you better not cry because mm. that's how i was raised mm -hmm. but was i got as i got older and i realized my son he's emotional yeah so i had to learn to maybe i shouldn't be as hard on him because then if i when he gets older, he may not ever want to open up to me yeah. mm -hmm. because he felt like I'm not going to be receptive or listen. Mm -hmm. So as men, when we dealing with our issues, how do we remove that wall to mm. be vulnerable to say, hey, yeah. I need help. I'm going through this. Even if even if it's not a, a therapist or somebody that's a professional, just somebody to just talk to. Because yeah. I really feel like sometimes a lot of men, we want to talk to our significant other or mm -hmm. we want to talk to our girlfriends, mm -hmm. but we're so hesitant because we feel like it, they might throw it back in our face mm -hmm. if we show vulnerability mm -hmm. or they might be, they may feel like, oh, you weak because you can't deal with this. Mm -hmm. And, and I know I have conversations with all my friends. Yeah. So as men, how we were raised, it's hard for us sometimes to ask for help. Mm -hmm. Whether it's financially, yeah, physically, yeah, emotionally, yeah. and mentally. So, how do as men, how do we like break that barrier to like be vulnerable to get help when we're not feeling our best mentally? Yeah. I, you know, let me put this down so I can answer. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's it's it's. It's multi-layered. That's really complex. Like I said before, maybe going inward. First of all, are you right? So being able to ask yourself, am I at a point where I'm going to have to find this? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to do this. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we may want something, but we, we reject it in ourselves, right? So just like you said, like, I know I didn't get this. Mm -hmm. I know I didn't get this. I don't being honest with yourself. I don't know how to do this. Mm. I I don't know how to connect with my emotional. Sometimes it's just stating the fact of the mm -hmm. thing. What is the fact of the matter? Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, I, I'm uncomfortable. I I'm uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's the only word I am feeling something right now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking a lot. Like let's see, said my mind is going. Okay, my mind. I have so many thoughts. This right. is too. What do I do? put it on paper? Mm -hmm. Something going on. Give it to somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know whether that's uh, whatever support system you have. If you you know something where you could just kind of say it a little bit. <laughs> you know, you have, you have the those soft landing <laughs> yeah. with with the low risk person yeah. or yeah. thing yeah. in your life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but honestly, if that feels like. Cause I'm not a man, so I don't, uh, I don't know, but I've witnessed 
And what I can say is put that on paper. Just have that conversation with yourself. Acknowledge with yourself, I'm going through something that I don't know, that mm -hmm. I feel is a weakness. Mm -hmm. Is that true, though? Mm -hmm. okay. I think this is a weakness. Mm -hmm. I My perception is it, I will be judged in this way. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a fear of judgment. Okay. Because okay, we... To 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 unblock this blockage, we got to look at what is is what mm -hmm. is the blockage? Mm -hmm. Is it fear? Is it self doubt? Is it insecurity? Mm -hmm. Is it shame? Is it blame? Self doubt, guilt, um, but and also you know letting letting go of an antiquated definition of man. Mm. Right, because you're a human. Mm -hmm. Like you said, my son is emotional, and the therapist in me wanted to correct you to say that he emotes because he's human, mm -hmm. and you do too, mm -hmm. because you're human, mm -hmm. as everyone else in the world. But you express your emotions differently, yeah. being a man. Um, and so sometimes we have to go back to that. Like I, I learned to hold these things in, but as a human being, that's not natural. Yeah. Yeah. I am I am so used to the unnatural. Yeah. And what actually feels natural? Like you know when you're trying not to cry. Mm -hmm. yeah. But crying is literally a biological process mm -hmm. to rid your body of something whether it's emotion or debris, a toxin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is a biological process that we mm -hmm. should let ourselves have uh -huh. and we struggle to have it. Mm -hmm. Um so some maybe it's like let me I'm going to go in the shower and I'm going to cry. Yeah. You know, trying to get Alone. used to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with self. So I, I, I tell clients, you're not necessarily doing things on your own or alone. You're doing it with yourself because mm -hmm. that's what we don't do. We have yeah. so many parts of ourselves locked away mm -hmm. that we don't know. So maybe for men, it could be helpful to go to your younger self, envision your younger self that may have wanted a hug, mm -hmm. may have wanted your grandfather or your father to um, allow you to feel your feelings, go to him, mm -hmm. see him, and allow, and allow him to do that. If mm -hmm. it's too hard for you as an adult to do it, mm -hmm. see that younger self mm -hmm. and let him do let it. Let him do it. Mm -hmm. So come into self first, and then you'll get comfortable with the external and finding the resources and being able to, to share with your partner, this is what I need from you. Because mm -hmm. I know as a woman... <laughs> As a woman, I'm going to fill up the space mm -hmm. emotionally. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell my husband how I feel and what, <laughs> how he's making me feel. Uh -huh. right. and, and But I could take up too much space sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's being able to communicate that. I'm not sure what I need, but I need something. Mm -hmm. If you and your partner can practice that, mm -hmm. for those that are in relationships, mm -hmm. um, that's helpful. Because mm -hmm. when the time comes, you'll be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Because you've done it for them. You know what that looks like. You know how it feels mm -hmm. to do it. And then they've received it, and they know how, they to, know how to stand in that for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So hopefully that supports that question and yes. answers mm -hmm. it a bit. Yes. Okay. I've, I've, I've seen it's a... um. It's a show um, with Carrie, Carrie Washington. You know what I'm talking about? With her dad. With her dad. Yes. I love that show. Yes. And I have told people that I know that deal with like, um, that have dealt with like childhood tra trauma mm -hmm. to watch that because I thought it was so cool how when she was being triggered in her adult life, mm -hmm. it was really yes. bringing her back to her childhood. Yes. And I loved how they showed that. Right, the moment that was in her mind of what was really going on, so yes. it was like she she couldn't if she couldn't get close to a guy, and or she felt like they were always gonna let her down. It was because it took her back to when she was eight years yes. old, and her dad was supposed to take her to get some ice cream, yeah. and he never picked her up. And her younger self and is younger in the self, scene. Her, yes, <laughs> yes. Saying how she felt like he yeah. didn't do that. You just mad because daddy told her. <laughs> and it was so uh -huh. cool. It's one of the anybody that's dealing with like childhood trauma and yeah. things like that. I always encourage people to watch that show. I can't think of the name yeah, of it. Um, I can't remember either. Was it prison? Chance, prison or something like that. Something like that. But it's it's yeah. Carrie Washington, Del or Del Roy yeah, Lindo. It's on I Google. love him. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. It's a really good it is. It's a really And it's good a series. true depiction of if you're needing to feel comfortable mm -hmm. to find a therapist, mm -hmm. it's nice to see 
that version of a therapist. Yeah. Not this Freudian, like someone sitting there, uh-huh, <laughs> yeah. uh-huh, uh-huh. That's yeah. not what we do. Yeah. And we're human. And we're like, hey, yeah. I'm not going to have a whole lot to say today because my stomach hurts. My stomach. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you have it. Yeah. I'm going to let you go, say it. Yeah, like <laughs> or it's like, yeah. no, nah, girl, that you tripping. Yeah. Uh, you know, so because I can say that in my own life, right? Mm-hmm. And so I like that show mm-hmm. because it depicts her in a way of ex- executing and experiencing mm-hmm. life um, humanely, yeah. right? Again, going yeah. back to the human nature of these, we are people. Mm-hmm. Some way, somehow, we've been told that we should not emote. Mm-hmm. That is not what we were created to do. Mm-hmm. We are not robots. It, not and, yet. And like you said too, Jaleesa, dealing with men before we go to the go home and move on. How we can, I can fill up space with emotion. And I had to learn as an adult, like I'm hijacking. Yeah. I'm, now I'm hijacking his space. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And mm. I had to learn, like, bring it back. Like, it doesn't make my emotion less valid or how I feel as valid, but he has feelings too. Yeah. You know, and I can't just blow it off because, oh, he's a man and I'm, so I'm supposed to be able to tell my feelings. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to, you're supposed to fix it. Yes. That's how we, that's Hear how we're kind of, you know, we're kind of <laughs> yeah. taught that, like, it, and we put that on men to do that. And they have big shoulders. They can handle a lot. But as we see in our community, our men are dying young from too much stress. Yeah. Now, because now I'm hijacking him. Like, I'm I'm adding yeah. stuff that he don't even need just because I feel in the way today. You True. know, yeah. so we got to learn how to. How to communicate how to that. Communicate and, that. And, that. Yeah. And yeah. It's just like, before we move on, I just want to say this. For as beautiful and great as the people as we are, the de- black delegation, whatever, we fucked up. Yeah. Excuse my name, but we 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 got we, some things. We, we, yeah. we messed up. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of us I messed up from something that our granddaddy them did. Mm-hmm. Our Generational them trauma. Did. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And somehow it then came upon us. Yeah. We yeah. don't know what it is. Yeah. So then we bring children into the world. We them up yeah so it's like yeah like, like i said it's just it's that stigma and like you said earlier it's starting to move away mm-hmm. but i still feel like in the neighborhoods that lock that lack the resources yeah they need it more yeah because of what they see every day yeah like i can honestly say i grew up in the hood i know what i saw i, I saw it but I still had structure at home. Mm-hmm. A lot of these kids see what they see. And they don't they go home, yeah. they see Way more worse. chaos. Yes, mm-hmm. chaos. Yeah. And now they're yeah. trying to compact this, deal with it, and then try to go to school and yeah. learn. It's not possible. It's, mm-hmm. it, I feel for this generation of kids. Mm-hmm. I really do. Yeah. So every time I hear something about them in the news dealing with this, I hurt sometimes because yeah. it's like everybody didn't get a chance to experience what I experienced, what Latisse right. experienced, what you experienced, yeah. what yeah. my own kids are experiencing, yeah. right? What you're what you're doing with your kids, every, yeah. they don't get that. Don't yeah. get and that. you said the magic word, love. Yeah. yeah. They don't get getting. that single word. They don't yeah. get love. And nurturing, yeah. right? Stability. Nurturing. Stability. Yeah. And then and it, like I said, it doesn't have to come in wealth yeah, right you know absolutely. stability is in the mindset yeah. of the people raising mm-hmm. these children and if you are being raised around people with unstable mindsets yeah they they don't have access to their loving side mm-hmm. they don't have access to their nurturing side not enough mm-hmm. and some people may think they're going to operate from a place that they understand and know mm-hmm. And sometimes that ain't enough. That ain't mm-hmm. enough. And that's okay that it's not enough. Yeah. These kids are upset and mad. Well, they don't know how to deal with conflict yeah, or trauma. Right. That's they right. don't know how to deal with their anger. They only yeah. know one way. Yeah. yeah. So that's why a lot of times I get so frustrated with adults when they be like, well, these kids don't know anything. Well, sometimes it ain't their fault. Yeah. You know what I saw? <laughs> I, a lot of times I, it's not. Did I send it to you? I sent this to somebody else. It was... um. <laughs> well, I don't want to say the word though. The, I, somebody was preaching. And this <laughs> man said that. I'm not saying that. I'm repeating what he said. Mm-hmm. And he was like, Yeah, it takes a village to raise a child. But what happens if the village is, I'll say slow. That's not the word he said. Uh-huh. He said, but what what do you do when <laughs> the village is slow? Yeah. And that's what you're speaking to, right? Well, it's like we have such high expectations of these kids, maybe because of what they have yeah. access to. Yeah. But it's like, but the village. Yeah. Where they came from is chaotic. 
It's chaotic. <laughs> they are cup pouring yeah. from empty cups every day and expected to do a lot every day. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can't save everybody. All you can do is like just send send them loving energy. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I hope you find that. I, mm -hmm. I see that for you. I can see a light in this kid. And I just hope that they see it for themselves one day too. Hope you get there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I had a uh, one more thing <clears throat> regarding, excuse me. <clears throat> regarding like uh mental health and mental wellness and kind of um i guess depression too um so as we as we as a community learn or as a village learn more about what that looks like um how do when we're recognizing that how do we recognize how do we provide a safe space mm -hmm. for those that we know that are dealing with mental illness or even depression because I saw something recently where I, I know that um, the person like he's shy mm -hmm. and um, he's dealt with some you know mental issues and then so he's in the shell mm -hmm. but sometimes family uh, just wanting you to come out your shell Get on in here, talk to your family. And I feel like that's putting more pressure. That's gonna make him more, yeah, you know, you know, reclusive. Like mm -hmm. he's not that's not gonna that's not inviting him into space because now you make him uncomfortable, you put him on the spot, right. it's embarrassing. Yeah. And you know, I know they mean well, it's just like, hey, you know, you want a little man to come in here with the room, play right. with your cousins, but that's not what he needs. Right. And I don't think sometimes family don't understand that, you know, that's not how you handle someone with yeah. mental illness because you're gonna you're putting them you know in an uncomfortable mm -hmm. place so how do we encourage or how do we provide safe spaces for people that we know that are dealing with you know mental illness and they may be you know um you know uh you know just um uh, working through it mm -hmm. you know um but just how do we how do we as a village provide that safe space for them yeah so first of all, right, I think it's removing obligation mm -hmm. and expectation mm -hmm. of how we are supposed to act mm -hmm. around each other. Because mm -hmm. um, you may not know what's going on, but it's like, oh, this person is shy. This child is shy. Because mm -hmm. yeah. we're probably not like, oh, having an episode. So, yeah. you yeah. know, we're, we're not acknowledging <laughs> right. yeah. that. So maybe that's number one is uh -huh. the acknowledgement mm -hmm. that, oh, I have to approach this differently. Mm -hmm. And in your approach, I think for us, it's removing obligation, mm -hmm. right? The sense that because we're around family or because something is coming up, you know, it's graduation season and stuff, you should come. You, you know, there's so much pressure mm -hmm. to show up the way we want someone to yeah. show up. Yeah we can't do that. So it's, it's being able to, to provide support, mm -hmm. um, in a way, like you said, that does not hijack mm -hmm. the emotional space. Mm -hmm. So it's like, Hey, I see you. Mm -hmm. I see you. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love for you to partake in this or join us. It's okay. If you don't, mm -hmm. it's really okay. I'm, I'm really okay. Mm -hmm. I accept you for exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. I love that you're in here. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I would love to see you come out but mm -hmm. in your own time mm -hmm. so it's it's being able to do that yeah. though and yeah. i don't know if everyone is there yeah and yeah. have the capacity to do that so so safety is executed by seeing the person mm -hmm. are you capable of seeing another person's needs yeah and respecting whatever respecting boundary that, yeah. that may be spoken or unspoken mm -hmm. especially with kids because spoken mm -hmm. and they're going right. to do things that show you have a boundary mm -hmm. right. but when we're like oh just come well now mm -hmm. you're creating resistance mm -hmm. versus understanding mm -hmm. versus an opportunity like you said with your son to eventually come to you whenever that time mm -hmm. comes so even that right like it could be as simple as you know, you're not forcing anything on them, but maybe we're just not offering enough acknowledgement yeah. and, and allowing people to have, hey, you know, I, are you having a hard day? You're not ready to talk about that yet? Mm -hmm. Come home from school. Yeah. Kids really don't want to talk about school when they come home from school. Yeah. <laughs> like, let's stop hounding them. Yeah. You know, I'm like, what's up? Uh -huh. And my daughter's like, that's my daughter. Uh, you know? <laughs> and it's like, because I'm, I'm not going to keep pushing you. You yeah. don't want to yeah. talk yet. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know, so I think it's just acknowledging the needs of your 
of the child or the of the young person or even the adult mm -hmm. like hey i see you whenever you're ready just i see you mm -hmm. there's no judgment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so non-judgmental mm -hmm. unconditional love and positive regard mm -hmm. for their experience yeah. that's it's really that simple like if you don't understand that back out of the space respect the boundary just back oh, yeah, out like just say yeah. hey i don't know what they need but i'm a right. i think no, i'm no, leaning right. in too I'm much yeah up. i'm, I'm yeah. but when you back up don't close the door right. say hey i'm i'm standing in the doorway because i don't, I don't want to disrupt your space yeah but um if you need me i'm here yeah yeah. and leave it at that or hey here's a resource whatever and mm -hmm. don't be mad that they didn't do it like oh i yeah. keep sending them job offers and a job opportunity <laughs> and they don't take it yeah they didn't ask you to do that yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah they didn't yeah. take it they're not ready for that they're not ready. maybe they're not ready maybe they're yeah. so anxious yeah you sending them that is sending them into a panic attack and mm -hmm. they're panicking internally and you don't know that because you're mm -hmm. thinking about yourself mm -hmm. take yourself back take step back. you and your energy step back yeah and just let them have a space. Yeah. I always tell people, if you want to learn boundaries, get a cat. Because <laughs> yeah. I have a cat, right? Most got a cat too. Mm, and okay. people um, with cats, cats are not like dogs, where dogs are always people pleasing. They want to, they yeah. jump on you. They like, yeah. they want approval. Cats are not like that. Cats feel like when, when they, when, they talk about circle of life, the cats with the top and lions. Yeah. Or the, they act like, even the domestic cat yes. acts like that because they feel like, when you're in my space, even though this is my house, yeah. when I get ready to talk to you, I'll get ready to talk yeah. to you. And so, like, I tell people, that, like, they're scared of cats. I'm like, no, cats, they are very, they're probably the most loving creature you'll yeah. be if you let them be. But you can't force yourself on them. Mm -hmm. They will come mm -hmm. to you when they're ready. Mm -hmm. And once they're ready, they'll give you all the cuddles that yeah. you want. But if you try to be like, oh, them. pick them up and, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. you know, because my cat, Gigi. scratched. You're, you're you're done like, yeah <laughs> if she doesn't want to talk to you don't pick her up she will let you know listen yeah. leave me alone it's my space you in it it's you it's, know? A, it's primitive right Absolutely. when kids shy away and they yeah. have that like oh say hi and they're like mm -mm. right <laughs> we we all still feel that it doesn't go away yeah. again just yeah. i keep threading biology into this because i want people to really recognize that we aren't talking about some ethereal emotional thing that only people who want to talk about stuff like this mm -hmm. no it's biological yeah. processes yeah. Yeah. that help run these systems mm -hmm. are, that are at play and so mm -hmm. it's, it's a primitive level of like what primitively what could someone need a little space a, a little, little space. bit of time a little space and to check in give a little nudge hey mm -hmm. see you i got a resource if you want it you good? um are you good mm -hmm. if you're not that's okay mm -hmm. I, with kids you know like hey you know i write in this journal or even being vocal mm -hmm. I, i'm having my therapy session today mm -hmm. or i'm gonna go exercise because i'm feeling very sad today mm -hmm. i don't know what i else to do mm -hmm. so it's going back to my original point mm -hmm going into your eternal internal space, mm -hmm. recognizing that and, and being comfortable enough to share a little bit of that, mm -hmm. but not in an over consuming way yeah. to where a person feels like, damn, it's all about you, ain't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but more of like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm being honest about me and I want you to feel safe enough to be honest about you. So that's what we yeah. can do to support family and friends and not take number one takeaway. Don't take that on. Yeah. Yeah. Don't take it on. You are not helping them by consuming and swallowing and holding on mm -hmm. to whatever they're going through. Mm -hmm. That does not help. Yeah. It doesn't help. We don't good ones don't. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't have to do that as friends and family because then you are not ready you know yeah when it's time, when it's time. Mm -hmm. yeah. you're not ready because you in it with them mm -hmm. so say i'm staying out here for you and i'm out here for me but i am soft in this mm -hmm. this is not a hard thing right like i'm 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 soft enough to see you i recognize you mm -hmm. I, I see that you might be needing something more let me know if i can mm -hmm. help or i'm just gonna if you're okay with it I you may not be comfortable letting me know so i'm gonna keep checking in from mm -hmm. time to time or I don't have the capacity for that. Mm -hmm. I, I I stop calling me at six a.m. to tell me about your man. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I've I've heard that before. I've had to say that to clients before. Like, why do you keep picking up the phone? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Why are you stopping your work day mm -hmm. and your 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 day as a parent mm -hmm. to help somebody else? And now you and you need extra sessions with me. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. So we could talk about what you've consumed from somebody else. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. And yeah. and we do nonsensical things as human beings. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 recognizing what capacity you have, not overstepping your boundaries, not overstepping theirs, mm-hmm. but maintaining a line of communication. communication. Yeah. Yeah. So the last thing we got, we have to ask you, Delisa. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Combs. Yeah. So we got to ask you, what, what's what's your thoughts? You know, the video came out of uh-huh. him, of him um, kicking and dragging Cassie down a long hallway of a hotel. Yes. And he had on nothing but just a towel. Yeah. Cassie looked like she was literally trying to run away, right. get away. So when you saw that video, what immediately went through your mind when you saw that video? He's sick. Okay. Not, oh, this is a mentally ill person. This is a sick, deviant person. Okay. You know how deviant you have to be to hold a towel and keep it in place mm. and kick the dog shit out of a, a female? Mm-hmm. That's not the first time you did it. Mm-hmm. You're not uncomfortable doing it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what drives him. (laughs) You know, I don't know his experience, but I'm not going to give him the out of mental illness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I've experienced plenty mentally ill people that don't do that. Absolutely. I don't know very many, you know, I, you know, there's abuse there and there's mental illness and there's, there's trauma and people have their histories, but you chose that Mm -hmm. there are some behaviors you you choose to engage in Mm -hmm. you know we just have a pattern of deviance Mm -hmm. and i think it's power related Mm -hmm. and i think he's associated himself with some things Mm -hmm. uh, that you know now you just believe that you can do it you 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 believe that you are untouchable Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can do that. Mm-hmm. In that in that way, him and every other cele- male celebrity, black male celebrity, and all the rest of them too, mm-hmm. um, I think they're unique in that there's power, that there's power involved. Mm-hmm. But they're also not unique in that. Because I worked at um, Chicago Children's Advocacy Center. Shout out to the like real SVU. Chicago actually has... Uh, a, a place, a center that operates kind of like SVU, mm-hmm. where there's you know detectives specifically for sexually and physically abused children, and then there's a clinical piece, and they do forensic interviewing. Um, but we held a forum back when our Kelly stuff was going on. Mm-hmm. And we talked about cognitive dissonance in the community because I'm 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 assuming that the, that's like a caveat to this is like what. Do, what are we doing as a black community? Mm-hmm. Are we holding these men responsible? Mm-hmm. But I mean, who's holding them responsible if they're not holding their daddy, their stepdaddy, their pastor, their uncle? Mm-hmm. Um, you're not holding all these other people accountable mm-hmm. in your life. Mm-hmm. And when we see people in power, we have this vicarious connection to to they don't lack anymore, mm-hmm. right? Bill Cosby, like, yeah. He made something. He was Black America's dad. Mm -hmm. So we just America's dad. So Mm -hmm. we just oh see all them women and maybe, but also he did that shit. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Also, these people are doing these things, and you don't have to be a celebrity to do them. Mm -hmm. Normal people in everyday lives are hurting other people. Um, so poor maniacs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He, he, I, 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 plenty of poor men. Yes. <laughs> yeah. you know, at, at any level, yes. social economic status is not a thing when you just want to be engaged in deviant behavior. Absolutely. So with him, I just think that his day, his time is coming. There's just too much coming out. Mm-hmm. There are too many things. Mm-hmm. I don't think we have enough time to really I, get into. I, what I it's personally hitting. think it's the ghost of Kim Porter. She's getting a lick back. Yeah, that's what I think. You know, and he that's so crazy. Me too, but I think once the Me Too went past, and he didn't really, you didn't really hear Diddy's name through that. You yeah. know. Yeah. So I think he probably thought he was gonna be okay. He's gonna be okay. Somehow yeah. Cassie moved on, started a family. Mm-hmm. Okay, she's not gonna say. You know, <laughs> that kind of person who has exerted that much deviance and power over others 
uh, clearly not just it's, okay. it's about yeah it, it's it's, it's yeah. amazing to me it's it's that's a word for him too that's a word for him it starts with an end what narcissistic N- mm. he might be because if you listen to him if you just really go and like listen to him when the stuff he says like he literally when cassie was married he would leave comments under her page mm-hmm. like a song he made is about cash like mm-hmm. he if you but put see, it all together right and now we know why like, okay th- maybe he is not what we 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 know him we saw him as diddy of daddy yeah bad boy but underneath that there's a bad person that's why i bring up cognitive dissonance because we so what is that Julie? like explain what that is so it's the uh, it's just the psychological stress of of being able to hold multiple or the duality of certain beliefs mm-hmm. right so like i said this the, you know having a um well oh, here's a good example right so someone who's like I'm all about saving the environment. I don't want to, you know, do all this, but you don't, you're not recycling. <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you drive a regular car, yeah. Yeah. but you're trying to hold on to these things. So what you do, you're overcompensating or you're creating greater and greater psychological stress. We would do that as a community. Mm-hmm. We're seeing people as like, right. Well, I, I don't know what Diddy has done for the community. I haven't followed him like that. Mm-hmm. So I don't know why we're holding him up so high. Right. But I, like I said, I think that a lot of us have a scarcity mindset. Mm-hmm. And so when we see men and black men get somewhere, we mm-hmm. want them to stay there. We want to yeah. co- keep rooting for them. Yeah. I'm like I can separate the man from the D. They say about our Kevin. I yeah, can the music from yeah, the and that's can we really? You're right. Like yeah. you need to be honest. Like he did that shit, and I'm listening to this. Yeah, that's 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 it. But at the time, people were like I just can't believe how you can't believe it when everybody saw him in the street. Mm-hmm. Did he? You know, like how can you not believe that when he made them walk all the way for that cheesecake? Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> you yeah. know. It's possible, yeah. but we don't want it to be possible mm-hmm. because we have so few mo- role yeah. models yeah. or, um, you know, just people who reach status mm-hmm. and we kind of siphon that. So I think we have to disconnect ourselves from siphoning status and power and things from other people. Again, turn it inwardly. You have mm-hmm. everything you need inside of you mm-hmm. so you can disconnect yourself mm-hmm. from this human's foolishness. Again, Diddy's a human. Yeah. It's doing some fucked up shit. Yeah. 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 So we, you know, making people gods and mm-hmm. holding them to this, uh, ped- holding them on a pedestal mm-hmm. and then being surprised when they do when some they do wild something. stuff. Right. Yeah. right. It's like, we, why are we surprised? Why are we surprised? And, and like you, you, you hit it on the head, Jesus, where it's um, because of the treatment of black men in this country yes. when we when they do reach a level we want to we want to be like go yeah like, we want go to black man keep and going then i think when it was bill cosby when and then it was r kelly and then now it's diddy we were like oh it's a witch hunt for a rich black <laughs> man and, you know? right and i even thought that you know like because i'm always like you know proud to the people but then you think about it no these are black men behaving badly yeah and yeah. we shouldn't be elevating them if this is how they act talent aside and like you said what have they really done for the community yeah. in what ways can we say positively we don't hold those people up those those men that are in the community feeding the homeless and <laughs> they don't that that's that, you know what i'm saying that's yeah. doing that kind of stuff we don't elevate them like they should but People that's in here, you know, acting a fool because Diddy, it's not just women he was beating up. It's men yeah. who have stories of he has a history of he has a history of violence. Of violence. Yes. Of violence. He has a history of his temper getting up. I mean he's putting hands on people. Of yeah. Putting hands on people. So he has a problem, period. And, yeah. and we overlook it with the talent. Mm-hmm. You know, and we have to start, we have to do better. We have to stop doing that. Because yeah. it 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 is it's putting people on this paddle stool, and then you like you see like then we get upset when we find out like I can't believe he did it. Why? Right. He did this shit in '96. Right. I mean, he definitely did that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and then it's like we we shouldn't be holding just because they're talented. We can clap for them and keep them at a human. Yeah. At, at a human status because 
like you said, at the end of the day, they're just like us. And there are other people that we could be elevating. You know, yeah, if we not. if we just got to elevate somebody, you know, yeah. elevate, yeah. you know, the, the man with the food drive. Get him somebody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> like, I mean, right. he's probably, I mean, because those are the ones who probably spending their whole check trying to do right. stuff like that. But we don't. Elevate. We don't elevate that. El- Vic Mensa, right. yeah. the the different people yeah. in the world, but and also, I, I mean, I think it's it's an industry thing, it's a cultural thing, it's an American mm-hmm. thing that we are just. Definitely. I mean, they're following a playbook Absolutely. of greed. First of all, greed and power, Absolutely. and so we just have to stop chasing. Greed you know, is a drug. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's addictive. Yes. Yeah. Once you and get America that, it's, it's, it, and you're right. I you can tell power would come. A lot of stuff comes with power. You mm-hmm. feel like I can get away with anything. And mm-hmm. how to maintain it. What do you have to do to maintain exactly. the status and power that you've created over the time? Exactly. What have you done to get it? And now, who do you have to become to maintain to it? Maintain it. Well, as uh, Corey Hoke say, <laughs> <laughs> when you talk about the people that uh, the men in Hollywood, how they got there, he called it Bagdoria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And Which yeah. got on all fours. I don't know. I mean, uh, hey, but, uh, you know that that uh, that butt spread is probably real. Uh, like, on, <laughs> on that note, oh, before we go, yeah. Lisa, you got a nice shirt on. Yes, let us know what. Yeah, tell us, us know, about yeah, that. Yes, that. this shirt is from my nephew Marquise James Hill. Okay. He is a 19 year old motivational speaker. He nice. goes around, he talks to young people nice. and advocates for their mental wellness. And just he has a couple books that he's written, some journals. He's he's been on multiple speaking engagements across you know the South and everywhere. And he has a clothing line as well, Love Yourself. Okay. Nice. And and so this is, was an exclusive for his auntie. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Hand he makes the shirts yeah. and the and the you know the proceeds go to helping other young people. Nice. Um, so it's just a wonderful thing. He's been doing it since high school, maybe even middle school. Mm. And um, so shout out to him if you like the shirt, if you like the message, go to his Instagram, real MJ Hill. Real and MJ support Hill. this young man. We talk about young people and how important mental wellness is for them. If you need your child, your child needs a resource or someone to uplift them. I've used his resources in therapy with young people. So Instagram, real MJ Hill, buy the Love Yourself merch. Get into it. And how yeah. we get on YouTube, Jalisa? Because you had your own. Yeah, what's your social? Uh, I don't, I don't be on there like that. <laughs> I don't really have. What kind of people find I, you? I, 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 I don't, don't find me. Y'all. I, 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 to be honest, you know, don't just, find me. I'll find you. I'm, yeah, yeah, I find y'all. You know, love and light to the community. I, I'm just happy to be here. Um, I'm happy to be on this stage. You know, meta life care if you really want to. But mm-hmm. right now, I'm focusing on some other things in my business as we're talking about mental wellness okay. and what's important. So, uh, you know, I just be lurking uh, <laughs> on social media right now. Mm-hmm. But I just want to say thank you for having me on. Thanks for I really appreciate it. it. I for love sure. talking about this. I love talking to the community. And give, give it to you raw, real, and honest. Mm-hmm. But it's it's with great amount of love. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you, Jaleesa. Um, we hope everyone uh, can start that discussion, you know, yep. about mental uh, health and mental yeah. wellness. And as the, the theme today is just starting with yourself. Starting with starting yourself. Starting with yourself. Yeah. yeah. And, um, so yeah. that's uh, all I got for today. What about you, bro? Well, I mean, Jaleesa, thank you. Yeah. I think this was needed. This conversation was needed. Yeah. I, I got a feeling that I... Uh, our listeners is gonna like this episode. Yeah, yeah for sure. I, hope so. I don't care what you say on a platform like this, every episode means something different for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So this sure. episode probably is gonna mean something to somebody who may be going through something. So yeah. I appreciate you for coming. Yes, um, thanks for having me. Episode 107, right? 107. Tees? 107. Some of this, some of that pod. Make sure you subscribe. Yes. Share, like, find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Make sure you go follow the IG page, Side Side Pod. Make sure you follow the Facebook page. And with that said, we'll be back next week. See ya. We'll want to be ya.